let's go through the steps uh, that we need to go through in order to analyze these bare dentaries. Uh, I've already um, downloaded the, the bare dentaries uh, from my hard drive. Um, I've rotated them into the proper orientation and I've uh, put them all in, renamed them and put them all into a single folder. Um, that folder is located right here on my desktop. Uh, it contains nine images, three grizzly bears, three black bears, and three polar bears. Uh, what we want to do now um, is, uh, first of all, uh, create the file that we're going to use uh, to import these images into the program TPS Dig. And the program we're going to use is called TPS Util. So now I'm opening up that program uh, and I need to move that um, over onto this other desktop over here. Right, there we go. Okay, so there it is. Uh, remember the what we're going to do, the select operation. We're going to build a TPS file from the images. I click that. Input is going to be on my desktop. Um, da -da 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 -da. Make sure that's where we are. Uh, desktop. Uh, bare dentaries right there. Um, and here are all of my bare dentaries. Uh, you can see that I've reoriented them. Uh, and I've uh, cropped the images a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the first one and then click OK. Uh, the output is going to be um, also in that folder. So desktop, bare dentaries, and I'm going to call it bare jaws. Uh, I don't have to put in the TPS file extension, but it will get the TPS file extension. Um, it is going to be readable by notepad. Uh, it is going to be a text file, so I'm just going to click OK. Uh, and then I need to click Setup, and here it lists all of my images. You see I have three black bears, three grizzly bears, and three polar bears. Uh, so I then just click uh, on Create, uh, and I'm ready to go. Okay. So now I have uh, that um, data file set up. I can open up this folder here, bears, and I'm going to have to grab that and swing it over here so you can see it. There it is, and there's my file. I'm going to go ahead and open that just to make sure. Uh, open with, and I want notepad. There we go. And there you can see it, landmark equals zero. The first image is black one, second image is black two, and so on. Okay, so I can close that. Uh, I now know that I'm ready to go. All right, the next thing we want to do is open up TPS, uh, rather TPS Dig. Um, so let's do that. Um, there we go. Let me scoot it back over to this other screen. There, there's TPS Dig. File, input source, file. Uh, so now I need to go to desktop and I want to find Bear jaws, or did I call it bear dentaries? Bear dentaries. Okay, bear jaws. TPS. There it is. Open. All right. Here is um, my first image. I'm going to click on this little button here at the top. Uh, you can see it up there to make this thing a little bit smaller, uh, so that I can see it all within the image. Okay, and now what I want to do is simply um, place my landmarks on this dentary bone. Uh, what we're going to do with this data set ultimately is go back uh, and scale all of these images. Uh, and these images were made at the Field Museum in Chicago, and uh, this grid work has specific dimensions, so I have a known size in here. Uh, we're going to go back and do that uh, later. For now, uh, let's just go ahead and click on uh, the landmarks that we want. Uh, so I need to make sure that I'm. I want my. I want to label my landmarks. Uh, let's go to Image Tools here um, for my um, tools. Let's see colors. Yeah, here we go under colors. I want my landmarks to be red, but I want them much bigger. Uh, so let's make them about. Well, 30 is as large as it'll go. The label color, 49. Uh, see if it'll let me do them even bigger. Let's make them all the way to 64. OK, 
Okay, and I want both of those bold. Uh, so that sounds good. Now let's go up here. Um, I'm going to click on that icon right there. And uh, our first landmark was going to be on the tip of the uh, canine. So I click that. There you see there's landmark one. Uh, landmark two is there at the uh, posterior margin of the alveolus for the canine. I'm going to click there. Then I want the carnassial tooth, the front part of the alveolus, the tip, the back margin of the alveolus. I then want to go back here and I want the highest point on the coronoid process. And let's add this posterior margin there as well. Let's put um, three points here, one there, one there, and then one at the bottom like that. One at the tip of the um, angular process. And then one here at the margin uh, for the ramus. And then I want another one which is directly below the tip of the carnassial tooth. Uh, so that's number 13. And then let's put um, the next one right here at the front of the alveolus. So that's 14 landmarks. If I make a mistake, uh, what I can do is I can click this little arrow up here at the top, click that, and now you can see here that I can take any of these landmarks and I can move it around, okay? So if I'm unhappy with where I place the landmark, I can just move it like that. So now I'm ready to go visit the next specimen. I'm just gonna click this arrow here at the upper left. There's my next specimen and I'm going to go through this whole process once again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I just realized we made a mistake. We didn't randomize the specimens, which is something that we really want to do. I'm going to click there. Um, and then I'm going to click here, the front of the alveolus. Uh, so make sure you do that. Uh, don't be like me. Do it properly. Uh, before you uh, begin all of this, randomize that those specimens. Uh, I'm just going to do this to, to show you how it works. Now we're going to click on Next and do it again with this specimen. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we can see everything. Let's click on all of the landmarks. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One of the nice things about TPS Dig um, is that it's going to um, tell you when you've screwed up, when you've uh, put down the wrong number of landmarks. So if you forget a landmark, it's going to give you that warning. So let's just work through these and um, do it again. Remember too, it's important to maintain this correct sequence. The sequence always has to be exactly the same so that landmark number six always has to be at the top of the coronoid process. Eight, 9 and 10 have to be the mandibular condyle, 11 needs to be the angular process, and so on. So make sure you get those right. If you don't, you're going to get some very odd results. All right, let's see if we can make this one a little bit bigger. It's nice to have these things bigger rather than smaller so that you can uh, place your landmarks more accurately. Now, one of the things that happens in this sort of work, if you look at this canine tooth on this specimen, uh, you'll notice that it's cracked. Uh, oftentimes, what happens in museum specimens is the teeth, uh, when they dry out, they crack. Uh, the other issue is that um, teeth wear down with age. Uh, so a lot of uh, editors don't like it when you use uh, canine teeth because they are so susceptible to wear. Um, one of the nice things about this whole uh, suite of software 
uh, programs that we'll be using is that you can go back and eliminate um, landmarks without actually having to delete them from your specimens. So you can specify which landmarks you want to use in a particular analysis. All right. Uh, so you can see this, um, this goes reasonably quickly. Uh, it's a little bit more time consuming when you have landmarks that are not well defined. Uh, we classify landmarks uh, in two ways, actually in a number of ways, but the two predominant ways that we classify them uh, is we refer to them as being uh, homologous landmarks. Um, that is, they are evolutionarily well defined. Um, other landmarks are referred to as edgels. Uh, so, for example, here the posterior margin of the canine is a homologous landmark. It's going to be easily identifiable on any specimen. Um, on the other hand, the top of this coronoid process here really isn't a very precise phylogenetic character. Uh, it is going to be referred to as an edgel. The margins here, um, so landmarks um, 8 and 10, um, are going to be homologous landmarks because they're defined by the epiphyseal cap, uh, but m landmark number nine is an edgel. Uh, you don't have to worry about that for the purposes of what we're doing here, but if you should do this sort of work for your, um, for your research at some point in the future, you want to be aware of that. Okay, so let's uh, just scoot right on through the, these uh, few remaining denaries. It is um, interesting when you go to a museum and you get a chance to work on um, specimens like this, uh, the names that pop up. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to um, work in museums where I been able to handle specimens that were put up by Charles Darwin, um, by um, a lot of the really big names in invertebrate biology and so on. It is, uh, it is, it gives you sort of a, an interesting perspective. All right, so we're about, uh, this should be the last specimen here. So number one, two, Okay, and top of the coronoid process. There we go. Uh, this one's a little bit hard to see. Probably the, the poorest landmark we have here is the one that's immediately below number four. Uh, that's the one that's going to have the most variability. All right, so that should be it. Those are our nine specimens. Uh, let's go ahead and save this file. Um, save data. Okay, we're going to bear jaws. Yep, that's good. Overwrite. Okay, that data file is now there. We can now close this program. And let's go and look at that data file. Let's open it up. And what we want to do now is make sure that each um, specimen has the same number of landmarks. Now, TPS Digg would have alerted us, us to that fact. Uh, there's landmark number 14, or rather we have 14 landmarks. The first one, next one is 14, next one is 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. I think they're all going to have 14. Very good. Uh, notice um, this last specimen has an ID number of eight and the first one has an ID number of zero. Um, so when we're doing analyses with this, uh, the analyses will oftentimes refer to a specific specimen. Uh, now you know where to look to find out where that specimen is. One of the options in program TPS Dig is you can specify the path for a particular image uh, which is fine as long as you're always going to be working with exactly that path. If you put everything on a, on a USB drive or something and move to a different computer, uh, that path is no longer going to be valid. So you, 
you need to think about whether you're going to do that or not. Okay, so that's it for this part of the assignment. Uh, if you can get that far with these specimens uh, in preparation for next week, that will be great. Uh, what we're going to do next time is use a program called MorphoJ in order to analyze this small data set. All right, I will see you guys um, next time.